So welcome everyone to the info session for cycle two of local champions. This is a cohort approach to jumpstart into New York State's Climate Smart Communities program. Um, I'm Vanessa. And I'm Paige. And we run Local Champions, which is just one of the programs for, from Partners for Climate Action, Hudson Valley, otherwise known as PCA. And Paige is one of the founders of PCA. So uh, we want to start off just giving you a little bit of background about PCA's larger picture. Yeah, so um, PCA, uh, Partnership Climate Action, is a nonprofit organization that is fiscally sponsored by the New World Foundation, a foundation in New York City. Um, but we are based here. And our mission is to cultivate and support local ecological leadership and action. So um, PCA was started by myself and others who feel passionate about working at the local level. And we realized there was great potential to make democracy work for people and planet. Um, uh, if we were more informed and active about participating in, in democracy. So we got to work doing just that and um, also engaging others to do the same. So our offices are in Chatham. We work mainly in Ulster, Dutchess, Columbia, and Greene counties, but we're ambitious to expand into the entire Hudson River watershed. We identify gaps in local efforts and fill them using multiple forms of capital, meaning um, financial, human, social, and intellectual. And we have a range of programs. Local Champions is one. So Vanessa will tell you more about what we have in store. All right. So yes, we did start off last year with a pilot, which was a success. So we're thrilled to be offering cycle two. Um, we did learn a lot from our pilot, and we have made some tweaks to the program. So for those of you who applied last time, I just want you to know that, to keep that in mind, that it's not exactly the same program. Um, for instance, in our pilot, we had six uh, lovely members of our cohort, who you can see here. Um, and then this go around, we're hoping to accept up to 10 towns or villages. Um, so we do have a couple guinea pigs with us here tonight. We have Chow and Christina, who you met, and um, we asked them to stick around for the Q&A portion so that you could even ask them some questions um, about their own experiences working with us during the pilot. Um, so what is the Local Champions Program? Um, you know, as Paige said, we're folks who want to do something about climate change on the local level, but we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. And um, we, we realized that New York State already has this nation leading program for municipalities, the Climate Smart Communities Program. Um, and not only that, but now New York State, um, the state level has passed the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act which lays out, again, nation leading goals for climate change work. So we were thinking these are, that's a really strong um, structure. And we wanted to bring the, the nonprofit approach and the foundation money to just create a ramp into that whole CSC framework. And so with the local champions pilot, who should apply, um, it comes down to the actual structure of the Climate Smart Communities Program. CSC is unique because it intentionally brings together volunteers from the community to work in tandem with elected officials and municipal staff. Um, so typically the applicant to the local champions program is a volunteer who's stepping up to help their municipal efforts in the CSC program. And their role is as usually as a CSC task force coordinator. And sometimes that CSC task force coordinator is also on the Conservation Advisory Council or a CAB or other environmental committee. Not always though. Sometimes they just wear the hat for CSC. And sometimes they're not a volunteer. Sometimes they are in fact an elected official um, or someone on staff. But most often we've observed them as volunteers. Um, eligibility. We, as Paige mentioned, we do um, have, uh, have plans to expand throughout the Hudson Valley watershed, um, but for now, for the local champions for this round, 
we're going to focus our territory on these three, uh, sorry, on these four counties. So we have Columbia, Dutchess, Green, and Ulster. The blue dots that you see here are the municipalities that have passed the resolution pledging to become climate smart, but who have not yet gotten to bronze. So this map is always changing. So this is like a slice in time, maybe right before Hyde Park and, uh, and Germantown recently got their certifications. Um, and then we also have uh, towns who have maybe passed the resolution, but not even yet um, put that up on the CSC website. So they would not yet appear as a dot. Um, and we're also doing the work we think even reaching out to towns and villages and suggesting this program and suggesting that they pass the pledge is um, sometimes can be just the ticket to get that resolution passed. So um, that's part of our effort here is just to introduce this and over time, hopefully we'll see it grow. So I'm so pleased many of you here tonight are at the sweet spot that Local Champions is trying to address. Um, the Local Champions program is really focused on folks who um, are maybe just past the pledge or you're just thinking about it. Um, you've identified your person who's gonna lead your task force, but you do, maybe don't yet have a task force. Maybe you do, but you're just getting started. Um, and it's really geared towards folks who still are at that point where you're wrapping your head around climate smart communities and trying to understand what is it that we need to put on a roadmap and, um, and how are we gonna get where we wanna go? If you're already really close to filing for bronze, you might be too advanced for the local champions program. Um, if you're already plugging away at those actions and you know the things you need to do, um, but not to worry because as Paige mentioned, Partners for Climate Action um, is gonna be launching more programs that are gonna to speak to folks who are beyond this particular sweet spot for local champions. So more coming soon to support folks who are already bronze or getting to bronze or on their way. Um, to use another <laughs> metaphor, and I'm borrowing this from Chow, who's here tonight, one of our pilot cohort members, she said that when she applied for local champions, she was just a frog egg and that we helped her get to, to tadpole stage. <laughs> and soon we're hoping that Chow will be a frog. Um, so uh, I never thought I'd, I'd say that, but um, <laughs> that's another way to think about it is that um, we're really looking at this early stage intervention. Um, so let me maybe back up and just give a high level description of climate smart communities for those who are here tonight who are really new to the program, um, CSC is a framework that shows a municipality all the things that you need to do to draw down emissions. And then also now, unfortunately, um, prepare for the inevitable impacts of climate change. So resiliency actions as well. And there are over a hundred actions. There's a lot of flexibility for communities to prioritize actions that are most relevant to your own town or village. Um, and then with each action, you earn points towards certification. And at certain, uh, certain point threshold, 120 points, you can then file for bronze certification by providing documentation of those actions. Um, and then you keep going and you keep going and you keep going for silver. Um, but, uh, you know, we're not gonna get into silver tonight. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, but this, so we're talking a lot about certification and getting these points and such, and that kind of begs the question of like, why do a certification program, why not just do the actions? Um, you know, we're doing these actions literally for the survival of the planet. Um, these are, you know, we're doing the work because the work needs to get done. Um, but then more concretely, um, this is a government program and to receive grant money from New York State, which let's face it, a lot of these projects at a small municipal scale, you need grant money to be able to do some of these projects. Um, if you're certified or if you're even, I think, even showing that you're invested in the CSC program, your, uh, your reviewers, your grant reviewers give you um, 
extra weight when they look at your grant application. So if you're looking for like the dollar and cents reason for doing this program, um, beyond just like having a roadmap and a framework for what you need to do, it's that um, kind of preferred uh, reviewership uh, when, you, when you're applying for grants. So, and yes, it's nice to have um, a plaque on your town or village hall, right? And it's nice to have the bragging rights um, cause this is about leadership, you know, um, the HUD, I don't know if you can see this map is a little bit small, but you can see the Hudson Valley here is a real hotbed for climate work and, um, and New York state is, is doing a lot in terms of the entire country. So what we're doing here, <clears throat> what we're doing here and what we want to invite you along to do with us is, um, is really banding together to take action and, um, and that's something that your community should be really proud of. Okay, so if CSE is so great, <laughs> then why do we have to design this program, Local Champions? Um, CSE is great. Uh, we designed the pilot really from our firsthand experiences though. Um, I'm on the Climate Smart Task Force and Rhinebeck and Pages and Austerlitz and Austerlitz also just got bronze, yay. Um, but we were like, this is an amazing program. It lays out all the actions that we need to do. It gives you model resolutions. It gives you step-by-step -step directions. But the problem is when you're just getting started, whoo, it can be really overwhelming. And um, for me, I was new to working with local government. So it was, uh, impenetrable, the, the jargon, and there's a lot of acronyms, and there's a lot of processes that if you're not familiar with how government, local government works, it can feel very alienating and it can feel lonely because um, oftentimes you're, you're doing it on your own. Um, and climate change is terrifying. <laughs> so that's why we really wanted to create a cohort approach where we're bringing people together to support each other in this work. Um, and we, we wanted to bring together these resources that we found are there, they exist. But again, if you're new to the game, um, you might not know how to access those resources. So what we did for local champions, we, we really we built in this backbone partnership with the Cornell Cooperative Extensions. Um, and so this is one of the main aspects of the local champions program you do a process with CCE called the certification assessment. And this is where they really help you comb through all of the actions of CSC and they uh, figure out which ones have you done, which ones have you kind of done, but you need to do a little more and you get that documentation together and then which ones, and it's a conversation with you and your town officials and any other stakeholders you wanna bring into these conversations it's a conversation about which, which actions do we wanna prioritize and how are we gonna build our roadmap to bronze certification? So at the end of this process, which would be in uh, early 2023, um, you would have a spreadsheet with all of that work fleshed out and you would have a, a written document with the recommendations that you as a group had discussed. Um, so once you have that, then the local champions program moves on to um, the next phase where you, we introduce you to, um, to certain experts who can help you put a little bit more meat on the bones of the actions that you want to prioritize. Because once you have an action, you have an idea, but then how are you gonna do it, right? You might need to know how to scope it. Do we need a feasibility study? What are the funding sources? How long is this going to take? Um, and though these experts are really there, will be there to help coach you up. And these are one-on-one -on -one consultations with you. You can also bring in like your town official or whoever your liaison is to your town or village board. Um, and so you get a number of hours with these folks um, really customizing your plan. We also bring in guest speakers. Um, folks who have done it before, folks who have knowledge to share, 
Um, and we do other sessions together as a cohort where we talk about how to build your task force. We talk about how to engage with your community and maybe even recruit more task force members. Um, and working together as a cohort is nice because it's also, um, as we become friends, you really need to be accountable to each other. You know, we're here to keep each other motivated and to encourage each other to keep going um, in what can seem like, you know, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Oh, and I should mention that um, most of our cohort Zooms and guest speakers and such will be, uh, they'll be on Zoom, right? Um, but we are, COVID God's willing, going to use some, some in-person time to get together and have some fun too, because let's face it, uh, climate change work can be sort of dispiriting. So we wanna get together and have some dinners and field trips um, and have some fun as well. Um, so just to be super clear and transparent, we do have some expectations for the program. We expect that our accepted applicants will be spending about 10 hours a week. Um, that's either in programming with us or your own work on CSC. Um, and we do expect folks to spend um, their really engaged time with the time that we do have together. We expect everyone to show up at least 75% of the programming. Um, the programming is great, so hopefully you'll, you'll come to all of it. Um, but we know that life happens, of course. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, as I mentioned, complete that certification assessment and the consulting hours. And then uh, that all culminates in a final presentation at the end of the Local Champions Program which would be end of April, 2023. And so those expectations really translate into the deliverables. So what do you get out of the program? You get that certification assessment that is free for that's no cost to the municipality. That's part of the local champions program. That's at a $6,000 value. Um, and the consulting experts as well is a great value. Um, and then that final presentation that you do that can be then leveraged to be a presentation to your community or to your town or village board, for instance, to explain um, what you're working on and what you intend to put on your roadmap. Um, and then um, this is really, as I mentioned before, Hudson Valley is a real hotbed for climate work. And so we want to introduce you into this whole world um, of, of amazing people doing really inspiring work and, um, and to make you feel connected so you're not working on this in isolation. And then finally, at the end of the Local Champions program, you're really, you're set up to be ramped up into other PCA supports. Some of the things that are in the works are, we hope to launch an uh, intern matchmaking and management program um, with a partner. We also hope to launch uh, Catalyst grants. So grants that would actually be a low barrier to entry to get you working on these actions um, and further grant writing assistance would always be good, right? Okay, so um, finally, just uh, to be super open about this, Local Champions is free. And if there are any folks who applied last time, we did restructure this other money piece um, before it was whoever was accepted automatically got an $8,000 grant. The way we're doing it now is if you're an accepted applicant and um, money is a, a barrier for you to be able to participate to the and 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 commit to the 10 hours a week, then you can opt in to a fellowship. We did find that some folks um, they they didn't need the eight thousand dollars. They were they were like, I'm good, I'm retired, I don't need the money, and so that's why we restructured it. That's a difference from our pilot. Um, and uh, here is a little bit of a flow of how the application goes. So um, it, you know, because CSC is really, again, that linkage between the volunteer and the municipal government, 
our application is similar or our application mirrors that. So you would, you would need the pledge resolution or a letter from the town board or village board stating the intention to do so. And then um, the applicant, so the volunteer Climate Smart Communities Task Force Coordinator is filling out the Google application on the website. And then we also have um, a municipal um, a municipal support document that we need the, your local government to fill out. So we make sure that the government is supportive of you stepping up to this role. And, um, and then we would have, we'll be in touch for interviews and hopefully we'll have selected 10 um, with the help of a selection committee by June or by end of June. So um, that's a little bit about uh, the flow there. All of the application materials are right there on our website. Um, the deadline would be good, May 2nd. And yeah, now let's do some Q&A. Um, we also, if you have to pop out, we have FAQs on our website. Um, so you can always check those out and feel free, of course, to um, be in touch with Paige or myself. Um, but yeah, I'd love to take some questions and have a little chat with everybody. Stacy, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, while we're working towards the certification going through the cohort, cohort process, um, can we work on actions? Are we able to work our way to bronze or at the same time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Stacy. That's a really good question. Um, if there are certain actions that you know you wanna be working on, um, absolutely, you can be working on those at the same time. Um, there are some people who are at a, a, an early stage where they're just like, don't even know what I should be working on yet. But if you do, if you have actions that you wanna be doing, that's great. Um, that's fabulous. We, we don't wanna set the expectation that if you get into local champions, we will deliver you as a bronze certified community by the end of the local champions program. We don't wanna set that expectation because I mean, it'd be great if you do, but it's, you know, it can take a lot of work and it really depends on how much your municipality has already done and that you can get points for. Um, so we don't wanna make any promises that we can't live up to. Yeah, as, as someone not going, that's not going to be applying, I, I, um... I'll step aside for other questions, but um, we have a Cornell cooperative up here as well. Is that cohort um, that you mentioned um, just for your region, uh, like would to get similar cooperation or, um, and, and we already do have certain um, relationships with our local, we've got a good one up here as well. Uh, or would they need to get their own people trained up here to do something similar to what Cornell is doing for you down there? Um, that's a great question. I think that oftentimes we see the Cornell Cooperative Extensions collaborating with each other and kind of training the trainer at other extensions. So that could be something that we discuss um, if we were to, uh, you know, extend the local champions program beyond these four counties. Um, and in the meantime, you know, the Cornell Cooperative Extension, Dutchess County, I think they were the ones who first came up with this whole certification assessment process. Um, so they could they could train other Cornell Cooperative Extensions on how to do it. Tom, go ahead. Uh, yes. Um... I'm certainly no expert, but just what the, what I've read about the New York State Climate Act, um, it, it's quite vast and they're still writing the rules for it. Um, but it seems to me it could possibly have quite an effect on the Community Smart uh, Program. 
So are, are, is anyone looking at that of what some of these expected changes may be in the next uh, few months? You know, I'll, I'll just answer that yeah. um, one part. Actually, just today, I was passed a report that was comparing the two and how the Climate Smart Communities Program synced with the CLCPA in terms of getting the actions done. So people are analyzing that. I'd be happy to pass that report, but um, definitely the actions in the Climate Smart Communities Program are working on also accomplishing the CLCPA. Do you wanna say more, Vanessa? That's what I was gonna say. That was um, a new report from Environmental Advocates or yeah, looking at the touch points there. And I should I should also mention, speaking of kind of um the the byzantine nature of new york state and and different touch points there's also the clean energy communities program um which has a lot of overlap with cec i'm sorry cec and csc <laughs> um they 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 have a lot of overlap csc um is a lot more expansive because it does get into um, I guess more land use issues and um, resiliency work. So it covers a lot more ground, um, but we do in local champions, we do talk about CEC as well and what you can get points for, for both. Um, and I, I wish we, Paige and I could share with you the, the mystical secret as to why there's two programs in New York state. <laughs> and I think it's really just comes down to like, that's how the bureaucracy birthed them as these kind of twins, fraternal twins. Um, I say, uh, let's see, question in the chat. If we are unable to get our town board's approval before the May deadline, is there an opportunity to apply before this time next year, or do we have to wait until the next cycle? Um, for the local champions program, our, our plan is to continue to, to run it on the same cycle. So about this time next year would be application time for cycle three. Um, but that said, um, Partners for Climate Action, they are hoping to, uh, to launch some other resources in the meantime. So there's ways for us, there's ways, for other ways for us to be in touch and, um, and hopefully be helpful uh, before this time next year. We should probably also say Vanessa that if they don't technically, if you don't technically get approval, you can, um, because of the timing of your board meeting, you can submit a letter of intent from your board that they plan to pass the pledge. Yeah. But if, it, if you're at the point, though, where you're just broaching the topic with your board and maybe you don't have the votes to get it passed, then, um, then, you, need, then you need to spend some more time really building support because uh, Climate Smart Communities, you have to, it, it's a municipal program, so you have to have municipal support. Um, in order to be successful. Um, Christina, do you wanna add something to that? I thought I saw you raise your hand. I have personally actually found like the, the rush to be helpful um, in getting board support. It, it wasn't like a dilly dally several month discussion. And it was like, we have to do this now or we are gonna lose this opportunity. And, um, and that was great for, for us personally. Okay, so a little bit of urgency might help. <laughs> Nothing like a deadline to uh, get some action. Well, I can also say that um, taking the pledge is really not the hard part because the pledge um, is generally things that everybody care about anyway. And so if people actually read through what the pledge states, few governments are going to disagree with that. It's really a, a willingness to do the work that's involved in getting to bronze, but the pledge itself is the easy part. Yeah, I, I've i heard um, some, some town officials, village officials, they might have this sense of like, well, we don't want the state telling us what to do. 
And so we're not signing any pledge. But the thing that I try to reassure them with is Clemens Moore Communities is a massive sprawling program with over a hundred actions. So you can really pick and choose a la carte which actions you wanna do that make sense for you. You don't have to do them all um, and you don't have to do them all in a particular sequence. Um, there are certain actions that you, that you do have to do like have a task force, um, but I try to reassure them that it's, it's, not, um, it's not like you're, you're when, you, when you're pledging, when you take the pledge, it's you know, to uh, reduce emissions and become more climate resilient and, and those sorts of things. Um, you're not promising to do any specific particular action if that, if that helps assuage their fears. Yeah, I got a, um, some background. I, I heard some of the communities down there um, are similar. Uh, again, we're lower you know, population up here in the North Country, um, but you will find a number of uh, towns typically that have passed the pledge years ago and have done nothing with it. And so when you run into that, um, I actually was an energy navigator uh, previously, um, and that in fact was promoting the NYSERDA climate the CEC program with municipalities. And there was a financial incentive. Um, and so municipalities would, would be convinced to pass the pledge, but unfortunately uh, that was the end of their interest in it in a lot of cases. Um, so just some background on, on, and it sounds like that might be uh, some municipalities down there as well or, or in a similar situation. And, and you're gonna have to remind them about you know, what the pledge was all about and, and now yeah. you wanna revisit it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think there's there's some folks here tonight where you're, you know, and that was the case when I stepped up in Rhinebeck as well. They had passed the pledge years prior, but no one had actually ever done anything. And that's what Local Champions is all about. And that's why it's called Local Champions, by the way, is that we found that you need to have a person step up and really commit to shepherding this through. Christina, do you want to add to that? Well, I just wanted to clarify, because I think Hannah's question was more about applying. I, um, I don't know if, if she could clarify um, if you have passed the pledge, you know, because you do need the town board right to approve applying for this, right? So that might be a different, a different issue, but also might be able to be handled with a letter of intent. Hi, Christina. Yeah, um, just Stuyvesant has um, has just voted to um, become part of the Climate Smart community. So um, perhaps actually Kathy could speak to this. I don't wanna put her on the spot, but I think there was some concern. Like our next town board meeting is um, April 14th. And I, I think maybe there was just some concern that there was some added um, legwork that needed to happen before applying um, to the local champions program, but Stuyvesant is in support already of the climate smart communities. So, um, yes, we we've, we've uh, already had we passed the resolution, and we have a climate smart coordinator, and we have a task force appointed. We have resolutions that have not been submitted yet to, through the website. Oh no, they don't have to be submitted to the website. That's okay. Okay. We have not decided on any actions yet or anything. We haven't even actually met because this only happened two weeks ago. Yeah. So I, I was well, I, I thought we maybe ought to wait another year until we had our act together. No, no, no. This sounds perfect like a perfect fit for you. You should apply. Okay. Got, yeah, just to fit. assure you, we we passed the pledge just to apply for this program. We passed it in December of 2000, whatever wow. year that was, 2020. <laughs> and was that right? I don't know, 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, 2020, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had nothing. We didn't have the pledge passed. We didn't have any actions figured out. Like that's what the certification process is for, the certification assessment. They, they get your ducks in a row and it's really great. I think you're in a Great. Assembling a task force is, um, it can be daunting, but it's also very creative and um, 
to have a little guidance in assembling a really effective task force is helpful to understand the kind of interests and capabilities that are most useful in doing the actions and then actually being able to document them. I just have um, another clarifying question in terms of the time commitment, which I totally respect. Um, I am currently working more than full time. So I'm just curious if that means like 10 hours per week divided between the various people on the task force. So say one week I'm putting in 10 hours and one week someone else from my community is putting in 10 hours. Is that possible or are you looking for the same person to be there kind of consistently throughout? Um, I'm, we are looking for the same person to be consistently there for the local champions programming. So um, uh, it, ideally it's, it's like one point person is the local champion who's coming to see a guest speaker on Zoom and then, um, and then maybe having a cohort Zoom later that week you know, we're trying to keep it to like one or two pieces of programming per week. And usually we keep those to like an hour and a half, sometimes an hour, sometimes an hour, 45 minutes. Um, but then the rest of the time is really when you're, you're having your certification assessment meetings, for example, um, or you're working on pulling the documentation that you need to do that certification assessment homework, um, and so that sort of stuff, I think if you have others on your task force already, you could share that work. Um, and, and, uh, and as somebody else mentioned, you might want to be, you might want to start working on actual actions. And so of course th those don't have to all be on you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so in terms of like the amount of time that you're, that you're like on zooms with us it's probably not going to be more than a few hours a week um but there's other stuff that you'll be doing offline um got yeah. it yeah so i would imagine some of it is scheduled time and some of it is work to be done on our own time is yeah yes yeah. something we did in germantown was um I'm a task force coordinator and, and I did the local champions program and, and like most of the state interaction kind of stuff, but we have a different committee chair for our CSC. Um, so he was able to like handle a lot of that kind of minutia and that really took a good amount of the burden off while still kind of keeping consistent leadership. And that, that was really helpful to me. Thanks, Christina. Yeah, we did have um, we did have our pilot cohort. We kind of recommended that they have an understudy, um, so someone who could step in should your your you know all of a sudden say something happens, you know somebody gets COVID or something happens in your life or your career, um, so that someone else could kind of step in. Um, we just feel like we want to set you up for, um, for success and have consistency with your, with your municipality. So if something happens with you, we wanna, we wanna have um, like a plan B that we can go to um, if, that if that makes sense. So that's another way to think about like sharing, sharing the work or the responsibility with another person. Colleen Lutz has a question. Go ahead, Colleen. Hi, yeah. Um, so Ancrum is, is kind of far along in this process already. So we've done the assessment, um, applying for bronze as we speak uh, for April. And, you know, from the research I've done, you know, just looking on your webpage and everything, I think we would be kind of in the boat of looking at the catalyst grants. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to find out if, do you give preference when you're scoring the catalyst grants to someone who has been through the local champions program over a group that has not been on the local champions program? 
Yeah, we definitely do, but that doesn't mean that your application wouldn't be strong because obviously if you're already if you already have bronze or you're that close to bronze, you're go-getters and we weigh that pretty heavily too. Um, okay. And just so you all know, they'll be launched in June and um, they will be announced in early fall and they'll be anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000 grants. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, I think when, when PCA is looking at the Catalyst grants, they're really looking for where, where do we want to make an investment in this community and in this municipality? Are they really going to have the follow through and the commitment to, um, to keep working on climate change? And how do we develop a relationship with you so that we can continue to help? So. In, in that way, um, if you've gone through the local champions program, we know you, we know how committed you are. Um, but I would say likewise, if you've already gotten to bronze and you're doing great stuff in your town, that's also a really strong signal. Yeah, and I should also mention another way for people who are more advanced to become involved um, with PCA uh, or to benefit is we'll be starting an, um, a network, which we're calling the Hudson Valley Action Climate Action Network, HVCAN. And so that'll be a community of practice for um, policymakers, nonprofit organizations, grassroots community leaders, educators, mission aligned businesses uh, who are working on climate adaptation and mitigation and advancing ecological repair. And that will actually um, also be starting with Columbia Duchess. Uh, green in Ulster counties, like the local champions program, but uh, eventually will spread to the full bioregion. Um, and so, what that's going to be is an online platform for people to join and have various different groups of conversations. Um, because we realized people were siloed with this work, and just like local champions, we wanted to connect people. Local champions will have its own group. And um, other groups, we're going to just start populating it with groups, um, you know, counties, or we're sort of we're developing it right now. There will also be a resource hub that aggregates advocacy and educational tools and offers a member directory and um, invitations to partner events and access to funding opportunities for greater impact and building community and sharing knowledge. So just stay tuned for that work that's in development. That's really exciting because I, I, since we've been doing this for a while, um, I, you, you really touched on it. You really felt like you were siloed and didn't really know what, <laughs> what you were, it would kind of be like, well, we've come up with an idea. Well, can we do that? I don't know. Let's try. And that's how things, you know, got going and have kept going for us. So uh, it's great that you're building this networking and, you know, the ability to reach out to someone who, you know, can maybe answer a question for you that you would, would take you 10 hours to find the answer elsewhere. So that's a great, great tool to have. All right. I'm so glad that appeals to you. Yeah. We found that, especially Vanessa, me and Vanessa and the cohort, just the simplest question can slow you down and it's no question is stupid but it might be a small matter. Um, so if you can come into a group and just get it answered, you, you can get going. Yeah. But sometimes those questions also open up rabbit holes that are absolutely fascinating. And I found that I kept getting sucked into things I didn't know to ask for. And it was really exciting. And the connections were amazing. Great. That's the thing too. I mean, Vanessa really started out um, much more advanced than me. And I feel like I was a lot of the time last year learning with the cohort. Um, but it's funny how you get into it. You know, you just, and we were proud because we, in the final presentations, our cohort really had all the acronyms down. They've become like technical whizzes. Um, but it's a little weirdly addictive. And I'd never, I never thought I would say that. But you get into it, you do learn it. And then you really, um, you get traction and, and you want more.
Um, how about Chow and Christina? Do you have any other, um, did you have anything you want to share about like uh, thinking back to you when you were considering whether to apply and then where you are at now? Like, what would you have told your former selves? I think my biggest confusion when I started in was we're a town and we have a village in the middle and then there's the CEC program and it's all very confusing. And to just untangle all that stuff is very helpful. And that actually got me over the hurdle of being able to start. We passed our resolution many years ago, but like many of you guys, um, we hadn't really gotten anywhere because it was just hard to get any kind of traction. And this was what made the difference. Yeah, something I found really helpful um, was kind of being like, the, in the cohort model was getting out of your own head a little bit. You can, um, sorry, my dog is being loud. Um, you guys all know you've been in some sort of municipal government thing, like the little tiny things in your town that are like this, that, or the other can just like somewhat wear on you. And I thought it was really helpful to see everybody else's like really small problems and how they're very different everywhere. Um, I, I thought that was actually one of, one of the most helpful things is, is just, uh, that yeah just like basically camaraderie and and um and you just learn a lot from the other participants which is great yeah i should say like we we bring in these experts and um you know you're you're working with uh people that are you know professionals doing this for a living but really so much learning just happens peer to peer um and it, it, that was also just really gratifying to see the cohort models really, really cool. Um, and, and to understand how the local governments work. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm like many volunteers. I had no clue how local governments work. I came from corporate world and it's very, very different, but you can figure it out if you're exposed to it. Yeah. Great. Any last questions? All right, well, hearing none, and we can close for the evening. It was lovely to meet everybody and um, stay in touch. I think um, I will add you to our newsletter. Um, <laughs> unless you don't wanna be, you can let me know. Um, but that way you'll get any announcements that, that Partners for Climate Action has about these some of these other resources and, and, and the network when it comes time to launch those. Um, and for those of you who want to apply, please do. And um, please be in touch if you have any other questions. All right. Thank you. All right, thanks. And thanks Chow and Christina for coming. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.